It is time for Bird of the Day. Let's get bourbon. Yeah, we're gonna get bourbon. So, so. I was driving around today. On way home from work. Drove past the pond. And I saw this bird. And I'm like, you know what? I think this bird should be today's bird of the day. And so I decided, because I saw it in all of its majesty, that this would be the bird of the day. And it was in a pond, because of course it was in a pond, because that's where they hang out. And today's bird of the day is the great egret. Oh, look at that egret. Such pretty, beautiful white birds. Look at them. That's they you know, you, you draw their 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 neck with an S and then a more different S. And then they got the winglings on the back. And 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 they got uh, no regrets today. No regrets for this one. And look, oh, look at that. They got the cool little green around their eyes. I got the long pointy beak. I think I think the great eagle is pretty cool. A bird I've seen in my area for my whole life. I like them a lot. So let's tell you. A little bit more about the great egret. Well, they're a big bird. 31 to 41 inches long, and that's from beak to tip of tail. But when they're standing up on their big, long legs, you know, they say 3.3 feet tall, so they can be, you know, they're almost as, uh, you know, pretty much as tall as they are long. Nice tall birds. Stand pretty tall. Pretty tall bird. Pretty tall bird. And a big wingspan. Woo! 52 to 67 inches. Yeah, we're over five foot wingspan. And uh, when they flap their wings, it's uh, kind of a slow flapper. They're, they kind of glide through the air with his big flaps. And, you know, you, you, don't, you don't mistake that. Because, um, you know, for how big they are, only 1.5 to 3.3 pounds. So they're very light for how big they are. You know, very, very light. Um, they have a pretty good lifespan out in the wild. Average in about the wild is about 15 years. Um, but, uh, the oldest ever in captivity was 22 years and 10 months old. So, yeah, um, now here's the interesting thing. There's a group of birds called herons, and there's a group of birds called egrets. Both of them are in pelicaniforms, um, but, uh, there's, dif they're in different families. Now, here's the interesting thing. The, uh, the great egret looks very similar to the snowy egret. And so that's why it was named as such. But then when the ornithologists did a little more study of it, they're like, oh, this bird we called an egret is actually a heron. So it's in the Ardea Day uh, family, which is all the herons. So it's like its closest relatives are like the great blue heron. And there's also the white heron, which is a little bit different. But then you know, the green crest, a little bit different size, different other locations. So, yeah. Um, and the pelican are formed, which also includes pelicans as well. You got, you got your egret family and you got your heron family. And uh, these guys, even being called egrets, they are, yeah, they, they messed up on the naming so much. They, they really did. So, yeah, these guys are actually herons, not egrets, but we named them egrets when we first discovered them, so that's what they are. Now, if you look at a little map down there, you see these guys are pretty pretty widespread. They're all over the place. You know, I said they're on uh, every inhabited continent except for Australia. And it's a little hard to see there, but um, there is a little bit of green on New Zealand. So they are on New Zealand. Um, they were introduced there. Not native, but they, they are a little bit there. Um, but yeah, as you can see, they like to live all around the world. So the green areas is where you're going to find them year-round. Uh, blue areas is where you find them in the winter. And yellow areas is where you find them in the summertime. Kind of interesting how it's like... Look at where the United States is, especially. It's like, okay, they winter. Like, a lot of their wintering range is further north than their breeding range. It doesn't make sense to me. Doesn't make sense to me at all. And then there's only a weird stripe of your. I don't know. I don't know. Get, get, your, get, your, get your migrating more sensical, you silly birds. Silly birds. Anyway. Um, these guys are pretty cool hunters. They do the cold heron thing where it's like, okay, I'm going to stand in this still of water, and I'm going to stand perfectly still with my beak above the water, and I'm going to stand there and stand there, sometimes for hours. And then when something tasty comes by, bam! Get some good. Get some real quick. Stabs their little beak down into the water and impales a little fish, or a little reptile, or maybe a crayfish, you know. 
they are they are fully carnivorous. They, they don't eat any plants. They they like to eat little critters that are found in the water. That's what they do. That's what they do. That's uh that's what they like to eat. Well well little aquatic critters. They like a frog. Javelin hunting, yeah, pretty much. Except they don't throw their beak, they just stab. They just stab. Uh and one one behavior they've been noticed to do in particular in Louisiana and Florida is uh they will like sit on the back of an alligator. And the alligator just be like, it's eh, bird on me. Alright, whatever. I don't care. Alligators don't care. Yeah, they just sit on the back of an alligator and it's a good hunting platform. Let's them uh Let's them hunt in deeper waters. Because normally they stand in the shallow water in the shore, but if they can stand on the alligator back, they can go into the bayou. Get themselves some baser, tastier snacks. Of course, these birds have been known to be kind of jerks, and uh, if another bird has caught something, they'll just be like, hey, I'm bigger than you. Um, and then it's be like, I'm going to steal your food. Uh, your food piece. They're a nasty little food piece. Mean birds. Mean birds. Um, hopefully I don't steal too many from crows. Eh, we don't have a lot of the same diet, but you know, if they, if they see a duck or a loon with something, they'll be like, hey, can I have that? And the loon, loon will be like, no. And the, and then the eagle will be like, too bad. I'm going to take it anyway. Bullies. What do you do with big white water birds? They're always bullies, huh? I wish I could answer that. They say, oh, does this bird like to live in the water? Is this bird white and beautiful? He's probably a jerk. I mean, come on. Swans, geese, petrels, gulls. It's white water birds, I'm telling you, folks. You gotta watch out for them. Is that racist? Maybe. And uh, maybe it shouldn't be so species against white, white water birds, but come on. It's, it's behavior that's, that's pretty typical. I'm just, I'm just saying. Just saying. Although the albatross is cool. You know what? Albatross is fine. You're, you're good, albatross. Exception to the rule. Um, now, the interesting thing is about these birds is they very rarely make a noise. The only time they ever make a noise is if they're in direct threat and they'll do like a call of distress and warning. But other than that, they're pretty quiet. Pretty quiet. You're not going to really hear them making a lot of noise. So when they're trying to be like, hey, baby, I want to make babies, um, they'll be, they do that through uh, they're dancing, showing off their feathers, be like, hey, baby, check out my feathers. Look how tall I am. Check out my neck. It's uh, it's what they do. Um, and uh, so yeah, not 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 songbirds in the slightest. Now the interesting thing is that they found a whole bunch of different uh, ways in which they have uh, done, like their social and breeding habits in some parts of the world, and particularly in a lot of North American regions, like the ones around here. They pair up and they just hang out in pairs. But there's other parts of the world. Well, they'll be in flocks of literally over a thousand egrets. So it's like sometimes they uh, hang out in pairs and sometimes they hang out in big flocks. And it's not the only thing that like makes that a consistent of where it's it's all about geography. Depends on where they live. North American ones, more solitary. South American ones, more flocky. It's yeah, it's it's, it's interesting. It's uh same species but different behaviors depending on location I, I, I think that's fascinating um now they don't mate for life they mate for one season uh and they're usually only gonna have one clutch a year and it's gonna be uh, four or six babies now here's another mean behavior um when there's not a ton of food and the parents may be uh, having a bit of trouble feeding all of them uh the bigger siblings will kill their little brothers and sisters uh, so that they can be like, oh, you know, I don't want to starve. So if there's fewer mouths to feed, that's more food for me. Yeah, it's kind of messed up, isn't it? I mean, it, it is kind of a survival thing, because if there's only enough food to feed four babies and there's six of them, well, I mean, two of the babies dying might prevent all six from dying. But it still seems a little messed up. It still seems a little messed up. Um... But that's, uh, that's the way the egret do. Nature is cruel and uncaring. Not evil, just brutal. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. Now, uh, 
these uh these birds were almost wiped out in Europe and North America in the 1800s because ladies were like, "Oh, I need these big beautiful white feathers for my coats and my hats." And and men did it too. Men did it too. I mean, it's probably male-dominated fashion industries anyway. So we can't blame women for this. It's, it's, it's always a patriarchy, but I'm just saying it's like women's fashion was dictated that they needed to have big, white, beautiful feathers, and so these things were hunted for their feathers and nearly wiped out. Uh, but luckily, an act in 1902 made them a protected species, and since then, they are now in pretty good numbers and are now uh, a species of least concern. So they're doing pretty good. Um, yeah, as you're saying, that they're... Uh, they're all around the world, and uh, they're not the national bird of any country, but uh, they're depicted in, uh, like, you know, Brazil, New Zealand, Hungary, and Belarus all have a uh, currency that depicts a great egret on them. So they're, they're a revered bird. You know, I think most people, they see an egret, they're like, oh, wow, look at that egret. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Yeah, so I mean, people like seeing the egrets. Can't blame them. So what are my thoughts on the great egret? Well... Well, I mean, let me think. I mean, now, as Hasio is saying, foul privilege. Now, they are not foul. Storks, herons, pelicans are not foul. They need to be, uh, they need to be a galliform, which is a chicken one, or um, a sipitidiform, which is the one. Wait, is it a sipitidiform or is that the eagle one? Uh, um, let me let me check. Um, it's, it's, it's the thing, it's, um, no, and seriforms, that's what it was, acipitiforms is eagles, uh, and seriforms, so it needs to be in the order, and seriforms or galliforms, so basically, chickens and ducks, and, and, like, pheasants and stuff like that, uh, so storks and stuff, they are water birds, same with gulls and albatrosses, they're not fowl, because they need to be primarily, uh, hunted for meat, to be foul. But boy, they are kind of foul in their behavior, aren't they? I mean, purely predatory, kill a lot of, kill a lot of little animals, kill their siblings, steal food from other birds. But damn if they don't look good to them. Very pretty birds. And I, I do kind of got to respect their patience in their hunting. So it's like, I don't know. I'm torn. Drink on these some guys. water. Okay, I'm gonna drink some water. So yeah, egret, great egret, yeah, it's pretty good egret. I like the egret. They're good. They're good birds, but I, I think they just need to maybe go to a little, a little, a little egger management. Maybe stop being such jerks, like like the rich villains of an '80s movie. No, that's swans. These guys are like the rich villain of, I don't know, there's some sort of rich villain in some sort of movie. Mean birds. But pretty birds. And I suppose they have their purpose in their niche. I don't want to see them wiped out. I'm always happy when I see an egret. I think they're pretty cool. Herons, like I said, they're a bird of contrasts. But we like them, so, you know, I guess we're just going to call this bird of the day done. You can have your own opinions on the great egret, and no matter where you live in the world, you probably have a good chance of seeing one, so... Keep an eye out for these big white feathery friends and uh, give them a little hello if you happen to see one. So we're going to call this bird of the day a done.